Hey, Dr. AJ here. If you are iron deficient or have low ferritin, you probably feel drained all the time. Fatigue is one of the number one symptoms of low iron or having low ferritin, and it makes just about everything more difficult. It really zaps your desire to go out and get things done or even have fun. So here's three things you must do if you are iron deficient or have low ferritin to help get your energy back. So keep in mind, this is for educational purposes. I'm not your doctor. So make sure to consult with your physician before implementing what I'm telling you. So that brings me to number one on the list. Go get your levels checked. You don't want to be shooting in the dark. Knowing your level is a good place to start. So work with your doctor to monitor and raise your ferritin levels. They should run a full iron panel and make sure to check that they are specifically testing for ferritin. So of course you want all your levels to be in an optimal range, but if your ferritin level is on the low side of normal, you will still very likely have symptoms of low iron, including fatigue. Low ferritin is often overlooked as a cause of many symptoms, and many doctors will be great to work with on this, but you should be aware that some doctors might not appreciate the effect that low ferritin can have on your health. There is such a wide range of what is considered normal that a low number may not stand out to your doctor. If you get tested and find that you are very low, which I would consider anything below 100 to be on the low side, but definitely if you are under 30 nanograms per milliliter, you should ask your doctor if you are a good candidate for an iron infusion. An iron infusion uses an IV to pump iron into your system. This is the fastest way to get your ferritin levels up, but there are other things you want to do as well to maintain optimal ferritin levels. So there's also some home test kits that you can order online. Just Google it and you'll find several but my preference is to work with a qualified physician. Number two, now that you hopefully know your ferritin level, or you soon will, you need to get on the right supplement and the right dose. In my opinion, the right supplement is a heme iron supplement. Heme iron is more easily absorbed by the body, meaning your body can use it more effectively to build your iron levels. Absorption can be up to 10 times more than your usual non-heme supplements that you may have tried in the past. Another advantage with heme iron supplements is that they tend to be a lot easier on your digestive system with far fewer side effects. The usual non-heme supplements tend to cause abdominal discomfort and constipation, which can lead to not wanting to take the supplements anymore because it's too hard in your system, or you end up having to take laxatives to counteract the side effects. Not pleasant. So another huge benefit of heme iron supplements is that you really don't have to worry about what few to eat it with, uh, when you take it, you can take it with food or on an empty stomach. Non-heme iron supplements are tricky because they aren't absorbed if you take them with certain foods like eggs, dairy, grains, coffee, chocolate, beer, beans, and other common foods. So I'll link to the brand that I like best in the description. It's the supplement that I have my wife take to help raise her ferritin levels after they are found to be extremely low. So her ferritin at its lowest was four. So after two months of taking this heme iron supplement, it raised to 50. She has a ton more energy, I can tell, because she's taking on all sorts of projects like painting the house, redecorating, and, and she started running again. So it's called Iron Repair Simply Heme by Three Arrows. Check it out in the description. Now, what is the right dose? There is a simple way to calculate how much you need. For heme supplements, you can multiply your body weight in pounds by 0.454 and you would take that amount in milligrams. So if, you're, if you weigh 130 pounds, you would multiply by 0.454, which gives you 59. You can round up to 60 milligrams, which would be three capsules of the brand that I recommend. Or you can just use your weight in kilograms and take that amount in milligrams. If you weigh 60 kilograms, you would take 60 milligrams. The recommendation is to take one capsule every three hours beginning first thing in the morning until you reach the recommended dose. During this process, keep working with your doctor to check your iron and ferritin levels uh, probably every few months to see how things are going. It's possible for your blood iron levels to get a little too high before your ferritin level is where you want it, so working with your doctor will help keep this in check. You might be thinking, I'd rather get my iron from food. Of course you can get iron from food as well, but a lot of people seem to need more in their diet, uh, more than their diet provides. So in general, it's best to get your nutrients from whole food sources, but in this, in this case, that, that can be an uphill battle. So good food sources of iron are beef, lamb, and venison. Those are meats with higher amounts. Pork, chicken, fish, and shellfish have some as well, but not quite as much. The iron from meat is heme iron, which the body is able to use more effectively. Plant sources of iron include fortified cereals like rice, uh, wheat, and oats, 
dark green leafy vegetables like spinach, dried fruits, beans, nuts, seeds, tofu, lentils, whole grains, peanut butter. Keep in mind that plant sources of iron are non-heme, which the body is not able to use as efficiently as heme iron. So the goal with all this is to feel better, right? To have more energy and to feel amazing. So to accomplish this, your target blood ferritin level should be about 125 nanograms per milliliter. To get the most benefit, you need to raise your ferritin uh, to, to 125 and keep it there for at least six months. You'll feel better all along the way as your level rises, kind of like my wife. She feels a lot better with her ferritin at 50 compared to when it was four, but it can take a while to reach maximal benefit. Number three, join the Iron Protocol Facebook group. I have learned a lot trying to help my wife and others raise their ferritin levels so they can feel their best, and I learned a lot of it from this group, but I'm not the expert. You will find some expert advice in this group. Uh, the founder, Caitlin, has done a ton of research to provide the best information and an effective protocol to follow. She's gone through her own journey with iron deficiency and has helped thousands with what she has learned. She's not a doctor, but a lot of doctors start to use this protocol once they find it. She has done her homework. So you'll also find a very supportive group of people going through the exact same struggles that you are if you're iron deficient. I hope this information helps. There is a silent epidemic of people suffering from iron deficiency or low ferritin, and it can go on for years. So please share this information with someone who needs it and encourage them to work with their doctor on it so they can restore their energy and feel like themselves again. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and stay strong.